stewardship. This quarter we'll be talking about how to live my life as God would have me live it. Stewardship is a lifestyle. And if you're asking yourself what does stewardship stands for, what is the definition for stewardship? It is the way I manage tangible and intangible things in my life for the glory of God. And although we are spiritual, we are 100% surrounded by material things. And what makes it even worse, we are very often driven by the love of owning those things. We are starting a new year. Can you imagine? <laughs> the numbers are ticking. Some people make resolutions around this time, and this quarter seems like an invitation to review our relationship with God in the context of our daily lives, in our challenges, dreams, our involvements. We learned the last two quarters that Jesus has His righteousness ready applied to us as a gift through faith. However, His work of transforming us in His image shines through the experience of our stewardship. So how much the surrounding worldly values really mean to me? What is their power of attraction over me, if you have to put it in the scale of 1 to 10? Do I live a self-serving or a self-gratifying life, or do I live a selfless life that has matured in contentment of a righteous living? Huge questions, not an easy ones if we have to be honest with ourselves. Mm. Sometimes when we hear stewardship in a church context, boom, it translates into money, tight donations. And sadly, often we can't bring it down to just that, but this is very distorted. The title of the quarterly defines stewardship as motives of the heart. This is much bigger and digs deeply into who are we really? What drives us? Where is our heart? We did spend the last six months studying about the greatest gift we have received, about salvation by faith alone. Very powerful and humbling stuff. Now we are asked the question, what do you do with this gift? How do you manage it, this new life that you received? What do you do with it? Let's get into the first lesson. The influence of materialism. In this lesson, we're going to discuss some personal questions that would make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. God doesn't want us to be conformed with this world. And one way of being so and one way of doing so is to be under the power of materialism, where the pursuit of money and possessions is everything in our life. According to the Bible, it's a devil's trap. <laughs> this is a very serious and personal topic. We were created and given the responsibility for our world. We were tasked to be creative, to multiply, to grow, to be successful. We were not created for mediocrity or to just get by. But we failed to manage this properly. We failed when we shifted the focus from the relationship with God, from this trust and bond, into some other things that we wanted to have. It's no secret that money rule the world. And that's why everybody is on a constant hunt for money, because they think this is the only way to receive safety and security in this world. However, only temporary and incomplete. For the Christian, though, life is built differently. John says, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Aha. Uh -huh. God distanced himself from the unbalanced and immoral pursuit of wealth. In fact, he's just on the opposite spectrum. We all know that it's not about money. It's about more money. Money creates opportunities. They open doors. They give power. Jesus gave this parable about some people that were entrusted talents, money, and they had to grow it, to multiply it. The question, though, that the lesson brings is about the God of this world. What is driving and ruling our world, and how does this influence us? Are we obsessed by possessions? Are we a possession of possessions? Or are they just means for something else that is driving us? Jesus told another parable of a rich man whose land yielded an abundant harvest. 
He demolished the old and he built new barns. And he said to himself, you have plenty. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Isn't that the American dream today? To be ultra rich, to be a celebrity? Why? So that I can enjoy and enjoy and enjoy pursuing my own personal desires undisturbed by any circumstances. And Jesus had one message for us. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. In what then? This is a lifelong quest. We want to find happiness, to feel secure and complete. And the easiest and quickest way is to satisfy our senses. We want to feel it, to experience things, which is good, but it also makes us very vulnerable. Some are preying on our needs and desires. The lesson talks about the allure of materialism. Marketing and advertising are huge industry and are abused because we are predictable and easy to manipulate. We are needy. Every one of us has bought at some point in our life a new shirt or a new dress or new shoes. And it wasn't long after that that we passed by the store and we saw that there is a better one, a new product that can replace our shirt. And somehow we ended up buying it and again we put our hopes in this better one, more durable and most of the times more expensive product. Not long after that probably we checked the flyers and we received a notification on our phone that here is the new product, it's the best one, the most durable one. And we ended up buying it again. Have I lost the power over material things? Somehow our deepest emotions and values connect with the material life around us. And it is hard to resist and control the allure of materialism. And it starts with the eyes, says the Bible. In Matthew 6, 24 it says, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. We should be good at what we do. This is the only way to fulfill our Creator's intent. We should put our best and look for success. The issue with materialism is that it doesn't fulfill. It creates good feelings, but even bigger cravings. By itself, it's not nutritious, and we may end up obese and unsatisfied. Lucifer was uh, someone who desired and wanted everything. However, what happened is like he fell very low from where he stood. The lesson makes one remarkable statement that we sometimes confuse our identity with our possessions. And this happens when we start identifying ourselves with what we own or what I can buy in this world. And then our possessions become our God. Isn't it Jesus that we identify ourselves with? Isn't it his readiness to sacrifice and to lose everything that we were inspired at first place. Materialism is a strong power. For us Christians, we follow Christ. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. This is the relationship that can really feed us, that you make us powerful to grow and develop. But unfortunately, it's not very marketable unless you have tried it or you're feeling sick and hungry. Follow us in this study next week when the lesson is entitled I see, I want, I take.